Hello, hello! Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're good. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a travel video like this one. Welcome back to my channel. My name is William Ong and I'm a photographer, videographer and a content creator. I'm also a full-time educator. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can get into Adobe Premiere. This is really meant for like beginners. So if you're really new to Adobe Premiere Pro 2022, this will be the perfect guide for you because I'm going to use these little travel videos and put them into a little compelling narrative. All right, so let's get started. For the first part, we're going to create an assembly edit, which means we're going to cut the videos into little bit pieces and we're going to use the music edit and cut to the beat. Before we start in Adobe Premiere Pro, one of the first things that you need to do is to create a folder. And I'm just going to call it my first travel video. Adobe Premiere likes you to be neat and organized. I know it's not forte for everyone, sometimes I get messy too, but try to be as organized as you possibly can because if things go messy like you know one files in a hard drive one files in the other corner of a hard drive one file on the usb drive one file on the dropbox and if you do that adobe premiere pro is going to go crazy and it's going to make you crazy in return so try to keep it as organized as you can all right i'll show you how to do that it's actually really really simple there are so many ways people do that and there's no right or wrong but as long as you're organized you know you'll be fine with that so the way I do it, I create a couple folders. So one for video. So normally I'll just dump all the video files in there, mostly all the video files in there. And then secondly, I'm gonna create a folder like music. Um, you can put in like music files. If you have interview files, you can create a folder called audio and so on. I'm also gonna create a folder called SFX, which is for sound effects. And I'm gonna create another folder for light leaks. That's actually how I'm going to get started. It's really simple. So I'm going to have just four folders to get started. For the videos I'm going to use for this exercise, I've got them all from Pexels.com. Pexels is a really helpful community where people share their stock videos and photos that you can download and use them for personal projects. So I've put up the link in the description for every individual video file that I've been using in this video. So go and download them if you want to. And for me, I'm just going to drag and drop them into my videos folder, right? So this is where the videos will be. So it's um, really, really simple simple and really, really beautifully captured video files there from Pexels uh, content creators. For the music for this video, I'm going to just utilize YouTube's free audio library. You can just type youtube.com slash audio library or just search for audio library on Google. You'll be able to find it here. And I'm going to click free music because I'm going to look for the music file first. And I'm going to look for the file called Tropic Fuse French Fuse. There you go. So that's the one that I'm going to use. So just going to download the audio file. And now the audio file has been downloaded. I'm just going to dump it into music folder, right? It's simple. So technically that's all I need for now to get started. I will talk about the light leaks and sound effects in the second video, but for now we're ready to get started. So now that we're in Adobe Premiere Pro 2022, I'm going to click the new project button. So now that Adobe Premiere wants you to know where your project folder is. So that's the folder that we created earlier on the desktop. All we need to do is to click the browse button here. And we're going to point out to my first travel video folder. All right. So this is the folder that we have got our video files and music files here. So we're just going to point to this folder and click choose. For the name, you can name it anything you like. I'm just going to say my first travel video. And press OK. All right, now we're in Adobe Premiere Pro 2022. 
So this is what we call the learning workspace. So Adobe Premiere Pro has a few presets in terms of workspaces, like you change from learning to assembly, to editing, to color grading, color correction, to effects and audio and so on. So you can change these workspaces quite quickly. So I'm gonna be using the editing workspace for this video. So I'm just gonna click on the editing and it should look like that. If it doesn't look like that, you may have moved the windows before and that's fine. All you need to do is window, workspaces, make sure you choose editing and then click reset to save layout. So that will reset your interface to Adobe Premiere Pro default layout for you that is under the editing. One of the first windows that you want to look in here is the project panel, right? So the project panel is where we're going to import the medias here. It says import media to start, which we will import in a little bit. There are media browser, we can browse it around, libraries, effects and so on. Just a few things to take note that depending on your size of your screen, you may have these little annoying little arrows, which are like, for example, let's say if your windows are like really small, you may only see one panel there. So you may have to click on that and look for effects or look for a different panel. So just keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much straightforward stuff. I'm going to just drag the videos in to get started. Now, if you actually go back and look at your folder, you might notice there is this file has been created and these two folders have been created by Adobe Premiere. So these are like preview files, preview audio files and so on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the video and the music, both of the folders, and I'm going to drag them right into the project panel right here. So that's it. So we've already imported the video file and the music file. So we're going to start by creating the first sequence. The sequence is like, you know, defining whether we're going to be working on 4K or HD or SD or all of these little jargons. But don't worry, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to go to File, New and Sequence, right? So you can press Command N or Control N. And this is how the new sequence window will look like. When we go advanced, we can create our own video settings and everything. But as starters, I'm just going to keep it really simple. To do that, I'm just going to go to the digital SLR. And if you open that triangle, you will see there are three more folders under. So I'm going to use a 1080p. That's the HD resolution right there. Under the 1080p, if you click on that triangle, you see three presets there. So the first is the DSLR 1080p 24. The last number actually stands for number of frames per second. The first number 1080 means that the video is going to have the resolution of 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels in terms of height and then 24 frames per second. I'm just going to choose that and press OK. All right, so that creates the timeline here. So the timeline is where we're going to drop the videos in and we're going to start editing there. So let's start by bringing the videos in. First of all, what you want to do is you want to double click on that videos folder and it will show you the preview of all the video files there. It's really nice and effective panel. You can also preview by just hovering your mouse cursor and moving it across. You will see the video preview right there. Yeah, you don't even have to click. You don't have to drag. You just have to hover your cursor and move it across. All right, I think I like this first one with the airplane. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm just going to double click on that. So once you double click the video, it will open in what we call the preview window. So in the preview window, it actually shows you what it looks like. You can actually drag this play hat around to just see how the video looks like. All right, so that's really simple. You can also press the play button and you can click on it again to stop it. This is if you prefer using the mouse. But if you prefer using the keyboard shortcuts, this is really, really handy. You can press L for forward. You can press K to stop it. And you can actually press J to go backwards. So in terms of basic editing, JKL is where you want to put your left hand over. So pressing L will go forward. Pressing L one more time will go double speed, triple speed, and so on. So if you press J, it will play backwards. If you press J one more time, it will play reverse and double speed, and so on. I don't think I want to use the entire video clip there. The clip itself is about 10 seconds long. It's going to be very, very long, boring to watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this point, and then I'm going to use all the way up to about this point here. At this point of time, you don't have to be precise, just a bit of estimate and we're just going to drag them into the timeline. We will refine them later. For now, I'm going to do what we call setting in and out, right? In basically means, hey, this is the point that I'm going to start the video. To do in, you can click on this little icon. You can also see the keyboard shortcut is I. It's a very, very handy keyboard shortcut. And then to mark it out is the O. So the mouse way is you can just drag the play hat to the point where you want the video to start. Click on the in icon and then drag the play hat again to the point where you want to stop. Click on that mark out. All right, so that's in and out. 
After that, you can actually just drag the video onto the timeline just like that. Or you can press the comma key on the keyboard to just drop it right here as you can see that. Let me just repeat that one more time. You can just drag the video from here directly to the timeline which allows you to put in any track that you like or you can just press the comma on the keyboard to just drop it wherever the playhead is on the timeline. So if my playhead is here, if I press comma, it will drop here. If my playhead is here, you can just drop a few of these if you want to. Well, I don't have any reason to, so I'm just going to select the others and press delete to delete that. So now my first part of the video is on the timeline. All right, I'm going to do the same with the next video. For the second clip, I'm going to use this video where there's a really, really cool drone shot of like drone descending into the clouds. I think that's really, really cool. And here I want to show you how you can quickly do by just using the keyboard shortcuts J, K, L and I and O. So instead of just scrubbing that all over, I'm just going to move it here. Just press I there. I'm going to press L a couple of times. I'm going to tap the space bar to stop it. O, and I'm going to press the comma key on the keyboard. And that's right there on the timeline now. Okay, that looks pretty good. For the next clip, I'm going to use this video of vehicles on a highway. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to move it over here. I, think I like where the camera kind of turns that way. So from this will be my starting point. So I'm going to press I, all right? So pressing I will drop the in point and then move over here. I'm going to press O to mark the out point. And then I'm just going to press the comma right on the timeline. You might notice it's a little bit jumpy at some cuts that that's okay because we're still working on the assembly edit so we will do the fine tuning later on so the whole idea is to put all the clips that we want to use on the timeline first at this point you might notice that the icons look really small and you could barely see your clips there because you don't know which clip is what whether there are gaps or not so it's a bit hard to tell so here are some of the things that you can do to manage your timeline a little bit so first of all, do you see this little line there? So just I'm going to click on that circle and drag it all the way to the left so I can see my clips a little bit longer there. But still, I can't see what clip is what. We can only see the name of the clip, which doesn't really help much. To help that, what you can do is you can go over the little line there. You notice that the cursor will change to this icon and drag it a little bit higher up like that. And there you can start seeing the clips there. It makes it a lot easier to identify what clip is what and so on. So the next one I'm going to bring is this video clip of the lady in the canola field. I think that's the canola field. I'm really bad with flowers or plants, but that looks really good. So I'm just going to use there, same thing, I. Make sure that that looks good. I'm going to press the O here. I'm going to press comma right there. And that simple. The video is right here. So another shot of the lady running in the field. Slow-mo, O, comma, done. And um, I think that's enough for a flower and runny. So I'm going to use this video clip of the lady walking on the shore. That looks really, really beautiful. This video is actually quite long. There's about 30 seconds. So I'm going to actually use this as two parts. So, so I'm going to start from here. I'm going to press I to set my in point. And I'm going to roughly stop here, press O and press comma to drop it to the timeline. And then I'm going to go forward a little bit more. I really love how the sun flare comes into the shot. So I'm going to actually use the I here one more time. Notice that in point moves here. And then I'm going to drag a little bit further and press O here. And again, comma. So that two clips are right on the timeline. And then the next one, I'm going to use this clip of that lady just running into the sea. That's a fantastic shot. The same thing, I'm going to press I. I'm going to wait for a little bit more. I'm going to reach there, O, and then comma. All right, so that's my really, really simple quick timeline. Let's take a quick moment to review those clips right there. All right, so we have the airplane shot and then we go to the drone shot just going down a little bit and then we're going to have this highway shot of the vehicles and then we're going to jump to this cut and we're going to jump to the next cut of her walking away or running away and we'll probably have a bit of a light leak over here so we're going to change that to the beach shot All right, and then we're going to end the beach shot here temporarily. And the next one, I want to change the tempo a little bit. I want to bring the surface into the shot. So I'm going to bring these guys right here. So that's that's a lot faster pace shot here. I think I'm like roughly around here. So I'm going to press I there. And O here. And again, comma. 
All right, so so notice that I made the mistake here because when I press a comma, my playhead was somewhere in the middle of my clip. So it splits and like push it away. So I'm gonna undo that. So let's not do that. Make sure your playhead's at the very, very end of the clip. You can also hold down the shift key if you wanna drag and make sure that you're at the end of it. Or if you have the end key on the keyboard, you can press end on the keyboard to go to the end of the clip. You can also press up and down arrows on the keyboard to go back and forward between the end of your clips there. All right, so anyway, I'm just gonna press the comma right now. So it comes and drops in really nicely. And I'm gonna use this clip of these guys just running into the water. Same group of three guys. Looks fantastic. All right, notice that the play hat's not at the end, so I'm just gonna press down arrow and now I'm press comma to make sure that it goes all the way to the end. And that looks really good, so I'm gonna change to the next shot of the, the big waves right there. That looks really amazingly beautiful. And I like how this guy comes out from the waves. Fantastic shot. I'm gonna press O, comma right there. So I'm gonna to go to the next shot of another guy surfing. And I think that looks like a good one. All right, that looks good. I think I'm gonna stop it where it's like really, really bright. So again, comma here, there we are. And I'm just going to go to the next shot where there's like a, a drone shot of the beach over here. That looks really good. So in point, I for in point. And then I'm gonna stop right there, about over, out, comma here. And I think for the last couple of shots, I'm going to use this shot almost like a silhouette shot of a lady overlooking this beach. Again, I think that's a fantastic sunset. Beautifully done. Okay, O, oh, comma. And the last shot I will use this shot of the beach there. I like where the waves hit right there. I think that has a lot more action to that. I'm just going to press I right here. And then that looks good. I'm gonna let it flow for a while. Press O, comma. All right, so this is my assembly cut right here. It's almost one minute. So my goal is to have a video roughly close to about a minute. So that should be just nice. And the next step, I'm gonna bring the music file in. All right, to bring the music file in is really simple. I'm just gonna click on that to go back up and there's a music folder. I'm just gonna bring the music file all the way in. All right, notice that the music is so much longer. I think that's about more than one and a half minutes long. So what you want to do is basically want to trim the music file a little bit. Here, I'm just going to use really, really blind trimming just by using that razor tool. You can press C on the keyboard and cut it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to change back to the select tool, select the first part of it, and I'm going to hit delete, delete that. It's easier to time your ending of the music because at the beginning of the music, we can fade it in slowly, for the ending you want it to time with the ending of your video so that's really important so to do that i'm going to make the audio file a little bit taller so that i can see where the waveform ends so you can see that this is where the waveform ends where the music ends there right so i'm going to try to time it roughly about that one minute mark that's where the audio should sort of end right there and if you sort of scrub to the left side, you might notice that it might, it might be a bit too long, might be too short. It's really easy. Just move your mouse over there and just drag it right here. So you can see that the music starts from there. Let's take a quick playback here. And you can hear the audio is actually really, really loud because if you look at here, the, the audio is peak. If you see the little red boxes there, that means the audio is peak, which means the loudest part and the audio is distorted beyond that. So that's really, really bad sign. So we want to actually tone the audio down. We want to lower the volume of the music track. Uh, to do that, it's actually quite simple. First thing you want to do is come back to the music track and you want to drag it a little bit long so that you can see the little line in there. That's actually is a volume line. Look. So all you need to do is just drag it a little bit subtly. Like you can drag down to like minus 5.0 decibels, minus 7.9 decibels. It doesn't actually matter how exactly it has to be as long as you feel it's quite okay. But technically what you want to do is when you play back, you want to actually have that audio to be picking between minus 12 and minus 6 around there. It never reach the zero. And then I'm quite happy with how the audio is peaking around here at roughly about minus 12.
but you might still notice that the first clip is still pretty noisy that's because this video file has the audio clip included which is the noise of the airplane in fact i don't need any of the audio from these tracks i'll actually reuse these sound effects later on so for now i'm actually just going to mute the entire audio track there so to do that i'm going to click on the m to mute the entire audio track from there just leaving only the music here let's listen to that now so much better isn't it Okay, now that's that's pretty good. So what I want to do next is actually I want to cut the video files to the music. All right, to do that, first thing, it's a good idea to lock the audio track so that you don't accidentally cut or accidentally move it around. So to do that, you see the little lock icon there. I'm just going to click on the lock icon there, keep it away. Now, no matter whatever you do, you won't be able to move it for now. It's pretty easy if you want to make changes as well. You can click on that to unlock that. But for now, I'm just going to keep it locked. So from this point on, I'm going to zoom into my timeline to be able to see that a little bit closer. You can also press the plus and minus keys on the keyboard to zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. All right, so now that we have placed our music, so it's time we're going to add it to the beat. All right, let's get started. So for the beginning, I'm going to leave this clip for maybe about five seconds. So this is the five seconds mark if you move that uh, playhead here. So this is roughly about five seconds here. Notice that I can't actually drag it further to my right because there are clips coming next to that, right? So to do that, you need to use a technique called Ripple Edit tool in Adobe Premiere. It's a really, really simple tool, but let me just show you how it works. So this is the ripple edit tool. I'm going to use it for now. And when you mouse over, you notice that the cursor changes to yellow, right? Instead of the red tool by default, if you use ripple edit, the cursor becomes yellow, all right? Now it actually allows you to move left, right a lot freely. When you release a mouse button, it will push the rest of the clips to the later part. So notice that this drone shot now starts at five seconds. So that's what ripple edit means. So it has a ripple effect on the rest of the clips that you have. All right, it's no big deal. One of the tips I wanna give you here is, instead of using the ripple edit, I like to use the selection tool by default. But the trick here is that when you hold the command on the Mac, or control on the Windows keyboard, it would automatically change to the yellow arrow, which basically means that it's now the ripple edit tool, as long as you hold down the command key on your keyboard. And that allows you to do ripple edit without changing the tool. So I think that's really, really handy. If you keep holding the command key down, and if you move your cursor between two clips, you will notice that it goes to this little arrow icon. That actually is called rolling edit. Rolling edit allows you to edit between the two clips without affecting the rest of the timeline. So that's also another handy tool. If you don't want to affect the rest of the timeline, you just want to change the duration of one clip to longer and the other one will go shorter. That's basically, you can change them by just using the selection tool and holding down the command key on the Mac, control key on the PC. All right, so I'm happy with this. That looks good. So I'm going to continue editing with the beats. Oh, actually it fits pretty well, so I'm, I don't have to change. All right, here, this is where I will change, right? So the highway shot looks really good, but I want to bring in the canola field shot a lot faster. So again, I'm going to use that ripple edit, hold on the command key, drag that to where my cursor is. That's, that's just nice, I didn't have to do anything. All right, so this is where you notice that the music kind of like change. Doom. So this is where I'm going to hold down the command key to drag it to the left to bring it in. Again, here though, keep in mind, your clips may be on the right, your clips may be on the left. It's okay because it depends on how you actually cut and put the thing in the timeline earlier. So you probably won't be exactly the same as how I did it earlier. And that, that's completely fine. So at this point, we're just going to time it to the beat. All right, so this is also where the beat ends. So I'm just going to do the same. If you notice that these two clips didn't change at the beat, you can leave it as it is. If you want to change at the beat, that's okay, fine as well. You can just move the cursor. 
So this is where the beat is, right? This is where rolling edit comes in really handy. Just hold on a command right in the middle of the two clips, drag it to adjust that. So here we go. Right, same thing here so i'm going to actually bring this clip forward so hold down command key drag it that way so next here so i'll just make it a little bit longer so this is where the beat ends so let's play that again see if it's too long That looks really good. That's really good. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Let's take a look. So what I want to do here is though, I want to actually creep the music in as a fade in there and I will probably use a cabin noise from a sound effect later on in the next step. So to do that, I need to create the fade in fade out effect here and I'm just going to come back and I'm going to click on the little lock to unlock the audio so that I can actually play around with the keyframes and fade in effect. So this one's actually not as complicated. All you need to do is click on the volume bar again and make sure you drag that track to a little bit lower until you see that little circle there. So this is actually a little keyframe. So what I would do is I'm just gonna actually click the keyframe here. So this is where, uh, if you look at that, this is where the, the cabin shot, I'm gonna move the cursor to this side and roughly around there, I'm gonna add another keyframe, all right? So notice that there are two keyframes now and I'm gonna select the first keyframe and drag it all the way down. So that means the volume is zero. All right, so if you play it now, you won't hear any music at all. And then you're going to start to hear the music right coming in. So this now depends on how subtle or how gentle you want the music to fade in. I think that that sounds pretty okay, although I want the music to be in full volume by roughly about a quarter of this video clip. There you go. So that actually is the assembly cut. So in fact, we're pretty much ready to export this as our like rough cut. So let's let's take a look how we can do that. I'm gonna show you how we can export this video into an MP4 file. To do that, it's really simple. Make sure you select the sequence first, right? So that's uh, one of the very common mistake people do is like people don't select the sequence to try to export the video. So make sure you select the sequence window or select the sequence in your project panel and just go to file go to export and click media and at this point i'm going to keep the settings really simple or right? i'm not going to make any tweaking yet because this is just our assembly edit so what i would do is just going to the format i'm going to make sure that it, it is h264 selected and then I'm gonna choose the preset. So if you look at there, there are a lot of different presets which you probably will be familiar with, such as Vimeo, YouTube, and so on. I'm gonna go to with YouTube 1080p full HD format. And I'm not gonna tweak anything except the name of the output file. So I'm gonna click on that. This is where the video file will be saved, right? So I'm gonna just make sure that's pointed to our folder. To keep it more organized, I'm gonna create a new folder there. I'm gonna call it exports. And that's where I'm going to be saving the file. And how do you want to save it? I'm going to call it my travel video assemblies edit. All right, that looks pretty good. And that will be an MP4. So click save. And when you're ready, just click export. Like I said, I'm not going to tweak any of the settings here, just exporting it, keeping it simple, using the ready made presets for now so that we can export the video as an MP4 file. So you can see that the video was exported successfully. So let's check that out. So here we go. You can see that the folder is getting a little bit messy, but that's all right. That's a good way of messy. And we can see the folder called exports and that's where our video files right there. So you can just tap it out. You can just play the video right here. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
And in the next video, I'm going to show you how I will bring in sound effects and transitions such as light leaks and also demonstrate how I would do basic color grading, color correction and so on. So make sure you check that out and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.